Welcome to the Ultimate Index Match X5 examples today, starting from super easy and building up to more challenging ones. Make sure you stick around until the end, and don't forget to download the example file in the description so you can follow along. Let's dive right in. All right, let's start with something simple. Here's the scenario. We've got a table with two columns, one for expense categories, and the other for their corresponding expense amounts. Our goal is to use an index match formula to find out the expense for a specific category, like electronics. Here's how it works. We start with the index function, because that's what we'll use to pull the value we want, in this case, the expense amount. So I'll type equals index. And the first thing Excel asks for is the array. That's just a fancy word for the range of values we're interested in. Since we're looking for expense amounts, I'll highlight the entire expense amount column. Quick tip, just click the first cell and hit control shift down arrow to grab the whole column. Next, we need to tell Excel which row in that column we want. That's where the match function comes in. So after the comma, I'll type match. Now the lookup value is what we're trying to match. So let's say we're searching for electronics. I'll click the cell that says electronics and add a comma. The next part is asking where to look for that value. Simple, we highlight the expense category column, just like we did before. First cell, control shift down arrow, done. After that, we tell Excel we want an exact match by typing zero. I'll close the parentheses for the match function and then close it again for the index function. The final formula looks like this. Excel equals index expense amount, match lookup value expense category zero. Now, when I hit enter, Excel gives me the expense amount for electronics, which is $240, pretty cool, right? And here's the best part, it's completely dynamic. If I change electronics to something like entertainment, the result updates automatically to $75. So that's it for the first example, a simple yet super powerful way to retrieve values using index match. Stick with me because things are only gonna get more exciting from here. All right, now we're leveling up. In this example, we're dealing with multiple criteria. Instead of just having one column to search through, like in level one, we now have a table with both expense categories and months. That means we're not just looking for a specific category, we're also matching a specific month. Let's see how this works. We'll start just like before, using the index function to tell Excel what we wanna pull. In this case, it's the expense amount. So I'll type equals index, then highlight the entire block of numbers in the expense amount section. Quick tip here, use control shift down arrow to highlight all rows and then control shift right arrow to extend across all the columns. Add a comma and we're ready to move on. Now, since we're working with two criteria, we'll need two match functions, one for the row and one for the column. Let's tackle the row first. I'll type match and select the expense category we're interested in, like pet care. Add a comma then highlight the whole expense category column as the lookup array. Again, use control shift down arrow to select everything. Add another comma, and since we want an exact match, type zero and close the parentheses. That gives us the row number we need. But we're not done yet. We also need to figure out which column we're looking at. This is where the second match function comes in. I'll type another match and select the month we're searching for. Let's say May. Add a comma then highlight the row with all the months. Use control shift right arrow to grab the full range. Add another comma, type zero for an exact match and close the parentheses. Finally, we need to wrap up the index function by closing its parentheses. Hit enter and voila. Excel gives us the expense for pet care in May, which matches the data in our table. Pretty neat, right? Let's test it out with a different example. How about clothing in March? Perfect. The formula updates dynamically and gives us the correct amount. So that's how you handle multiple criteria with index match. It's super versatile and will make your life so much easier when dealing with complex tables. On to the next level. All right, let's take it up a notch. In this example, we're working with a weekend fun budget. And instead of pulling a single value, we'll be creating a formula that dynamically works across multiple rows and columns. 
The goal here is to set up a formula that's fixed where it needs to be, but flexible enough to work dynamically when dragged or copied. This is where relative referencing comes into play. Let's dive in. We'll start with the index function as usual. I'll type e equals index. And since we're interested in all the values in the budget table, I'll highlight everything, starting from the top left number and using control shift down arrow and control shift right arrow to grab the entire data range. Now to make sure this range doesn't shift when the formula moves, I'll press F4, which locks the range by adding dollar signs before the row and column references. Next, we need to set up the first match function, which will determine the row. I'll type match and select the expense category, e.g. dining. Here's where the magic of relative referencing comes in. We want this reference to adjust as the formula is copied down, but not when it's copied across columns. To do that, I'll press F4 three times, which locks the column but allows the row to adjust. Then I'll highlight the expense category column as the lookup array, press F4 to lock it, and add a zero for an exact match. Close the parentheses, and that's our row set. Now for the column. After a comma, I'll set up a second match function. This time, the lookup value is the month, e.g. February. I'll select the month and press F4 twice so that it's locked to the row but can move horizontally across columns. For the lookup array, I'll highlight the row of months, press 4 to lock it, and add another zero for an exact match. Close the parentheses for the match function, then close the index function, and hit enter. The formula returns the expense for dining in February, $130. Now, here's the cool part. I can drag this formula down and across to fill the rest of the table. Using shortcuts like shift down arrow, control D to fill down and control R to fill right, we can quickly populate the entire table. And there you have it. All weekend spending for the three months adds up to $1,420. Everything looks spot on, doesn't it? Let's keep going. Now we're getting into advanced territory. In this scenario, we've added a new layer of complexity. The data now includes duplicate months like May and June because they're split by years. This means we're working with three criteria, the expense category, the month, and the year. Let's see how we handle this. We'll start with the index function. As usual, type equals index X and highlight the entire range of data we're interested in, specifically the total amounts. Add a comma to move to the next part of the formula. The first match is straightforward since it's just the expense category, something we've already done in previous levels. Type match and select the specific category, e.g. utilities. Then highlight the expense category column, add another comma, and specify zero for an exact match. Close the parentheses, hit the comma key to move on. We now need to account for two criteria, the year and the month. To do this, we'll combine both criteria using the and symbol. Start by typing match, and for the lookup value, combine the year and month using end, e.g. 2021 and May. Add a comma, and then combine the arrays in the same way. First, highlight the shot year column using control shift right arrow, then use N and add the month column the same way. Essentially, we're matching two criteria for both the lookup value and the lookup array. Add a comma, specify zero for an exact match and close the parentheses for both the match and index functions. Hit enter and there it is. For example, if we're looking for utilities in May 2021, the formula returns the correct figure. If we switch it to something like healthcare, June 2022, the formula updates dynamically and gives the right answer again. It's a powerful way to handle multiple criteria, isn't it? Now let's address one of the main limitations of using index match. If there are multiple rows with the same name, like groceries appearing more than once, it can't automatically aggregate or sum those values. For example, let's say we want to calculate the total sales for groceries in January. Since index match isn't designed for this, we'll need to take a different approach using the filter function. Here's how it works. We start by typing equals filter and selecting the array, the range of dollar amounts. To select it, use control shift down arrow, followed by control shift right arrow. Next, add a comma and then specify the condition we want to filter by. 
In this case, we want the expense category to equal groceries. Highlight the expense category column using control shift down arrow and set it equal to the cell containing groceries, e.g. C3. Close the parentheses and hit enter. At this point, we see all the rows corresponding to groceries, but it includes every instance across all months. That's why we need to refine this further by adding a second condition to filter by the month. To do this, wrap the existing filter function in another filter function. Add a new equals filter at the very beginning. For the array, include the previous filter function's result. Then at the end of the formula, add a comma and apply the second condition. Highlight the month's row using control shift right arrow and set it equal to January. Close the parentheses and hit enter again. Now we're only seeing the rows for groceries in January. But since we need the total amount, let's wrap this entire formula in a sum function. Add equals sum at the beginning and close the parentheses at the very end. Press enter and there you go. The total for groceries in January is $500. We can repeat this for another scenario, such as calculating the total expenses for utilities in May. The formula updates dynamically, and the total expenditure shows as $330. Perfect. If you'd like to explore more Excel formulas, check out the video linked here to learn about lookup functions. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.